city wants customer choice, particularly dealing with industry and commercial apartments. The problem I have with that is that it's not contiguous with the city limits. The, the property owners outside the city limits between where the customer wants that choice, they didn't have a somebody that represents them made that decision, and not the city of Austin. They've got to have a voice. You leave them with no choice. If they have no voice, if the city of Austin, yeah, they do run your water and sewer, and they run past their property to the next piece of property that's not contiguous to the people that have property next to the city of Austin, now they're stuck with the city water and sewer. And that may Why be are they stuck with it? Because it's down there in service, service area. Mm -hmm. What are they doing now? Well, they don't have any service area right now. It's service area is not kind of using water, septic, and all that kind of stuff. But if they should they be required to they're not city water? They're not required. But if they want to say it's a vacant piece of property, 50 acres on either side of the road, and they want to develop it later on, then they got to use water and sewer from the city also that's what they're service area. Well, no. Yeah, here, here's the thing. From an economic standpoint, it would make sense that if someone was one of those pieces of property and they decided they wanted to develop their piece of property, it would be more economical for them to be able to say, okay, well, my option here is the city of water, I'm going to hook the city of water. So it's now, a vacant they, piece of property, so the residents in that, that would go to that new piece of property, what do they care? Let's go all the way back for just one second to what the what the DCA expects out of us. The DCA expects to receive a map that says this is this person, this is this government service area, this is that government service area, and 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 we've yet to see that. I mean, basically, when we send them the map, correct me, Mr. Chairman. Basically, when we send them the map, they say designate the future service areas that you want to kind of stake your flag on. It basically says. We won't access to any of the unincorporated Well, we did that once, and all we got was just a big old circle. Right. Yeah, basically the whole county. Yeah. But I mean, but, but at the end of the day, that's what DCA really expects. They expect a service delivery map that shows where their future service areas are outside of their what I call jurisdiction, which is in the unincorporated area. So I, I don't know how we haven't really talked about that recently. I don't know how we're going to get that. Well, the service areas are created for number one is to, is to prevent the duplication of services. However, going back to Mr. Griner's example, if this customer out here says, I want city water and sewer and these five parcels out, then you kind of obligated these folks unless you're willing to run across the city lines to serve those other parcels and for them to be able to stay in the unincorporated area. Because re reality is, is that there's some citizens that want to live in the unincorporated areas, and yes, there are some citizens that want to live in the cities to get a higher level of services, and the fact that they like living in a community rather than living out in the county. Yeah, Mark, I'm not saying we would make the same decision. We may still make that same decision to run that water out there five parcels out. But those representatives, those people that have land in that corporate area, they're the ones that vote for us. They're, they're who we represent. Right. So if we make that decision, they can, get, they can vote us all out of office. If the city makes that decision, they have no, they, they have no recourse at all against the city of Austin. They're not part of the city of Austin. Yeah. So it's got to be our decision. Yeah. And like I said, we, may, we may make the same decision the city would make. But we probably will if it's a 400 job industry is moving to town. But it's got to still be our decision to represent those people that have property on the outside of the city limits. And at the end of the day, it defeats the intent of the U of the, I mean, that's correct. That's the right. That's right. I get that. I get that. So I think we can get there. The point with it, I guess, the update from this standpoint is that it's still, still short term. Or it's, you know, we're still working on it. Uh, definitely, the, it matter the future growth. Absolutely. And is it something that I to be considered for the FY 2021 budget? Yes, we still don't have to figure that there's going to be some expenses that's yet to be spent. I'm also, Mr. I'm just trying to figure out the, the, the request for the road issue. I'm just trying to figure out what, where the shortcoming is and understanding I'll try. The, the road issue. I'll try. Yeah. Initially, um, initially, when this was first.
first came, this first came out. And if I get the numbers wrong, then maybe somebody can correct me. But the issue was, was that there was 4.78 miles or something, four and a half miles, let's just say, of unincorporated area roads that were in the city limits. It's still on by, that's where they went down the road and annexed property on each side, but never annexed the road. So the road technically was still a county road. The issue was, was that who was going to maintain that maintenance on that road? I told the mayor, I said, it's not a problem. If it's a county road, the county's going to take care of it. If you've got a road in the city that is not being maintained by the county, it's due to oversight. Please let me know what it is. We'll get it to public works, and then public works will get it on the schedule to make sure it gets taken care of. That was the initial complaint, if you want to call it that, concern. Then from there, it grew into the fact that they want you, as the county commission, to collect all of the taxes for roads and then give them their proportionate amount of money so that they can take care of their roads. And all that is, is it allows them to reduce their village, but creates a situation that you have no other choice but to raise village to be able to cover all the expenses of all the roads. You have to be realistic. Unincorporated area Lowndes County is a large area, and there's a lot of maintenance on a lot of roads out there where the cities, again, when they, their charters are created in the past, they accept those roads, and they should, in my opinion, if they annex down each side of the road, they should also be annexing and taking that road over. To me, it doesn't matter whether we put taxpayer resources out there previously to, to improve that road, but from that point on, wherever that city limit sign is posted on the side of the road, that should be the city road at that point. But it says legally that they're responsible for maintaining, doing all the stuff, and, and they're responsible Put it on these roads that are in the city. Yeah. Now, it does say that if there are some roads that the city doesn't want to have control over, then they can say, can we take them over and we, there may be some roads we might want to take over. It's very, that process is very similar to state roads, and if the state, if the county chooses to take over, or in the city, to take over a state road, then you take over that maintenance. The key to that, though, is the county will have complete control of that road, when to pay it, when to research it, when to strike it, when to mow it. And I don't know how many of your city council members, or my city council members, would like to not have control over their city streets. I'm sure most of them want that control. And you know, when to, when to, when to widen the street, when to, like I said, oh, if the county does it, the county controls it completely. And that was my comment to, to the previous mayor, was if you want us to collect all of the taxes, you want that on our side of the ledger, or the maintenance of all the roads, then fine. But turn over all of your roads to the county, and then we will take, we can take over the maintenance of them. But they don't want to do that. They just want you to take the money that it would take for them to do the maintenance, and they want you to collect the taxes in your mill rather than in the city mill. You got one entity tax and one entity spending. But it's my understanding that, and, I, and, and I, again, this is not because I can't quote it, but it is my understanding that it's already been decided. There's a case history that says that the roads are for all of the citizens, whether they're city roads or county roads, it's for all citizens. So I don't think that's got much headway it was just this one council woman raised this question back up um, and so my conversation again with that one was that uh, that's not a huge issue as a concern but certainly if we get water and sewer is the answer to SDS then she's fine with that. That's the reason I say one issue because we're not going to go back and solve that one and then end up with five other things that we want to go back and revisit and let's talk about this and talk about that because we've done that a long time. 
we're down to one issue, let's resolve this one issue, and then we're done. Okay. Okay, anything else? Did that go further than you hoped it would? <laughs> I really had no hope on that. <laughs> I, I, but again, that's short term, future growth, yes, and budget.